All right. And Carmen, what you said just now, that sounded beautifully clear. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Doing well. Um, so I think, you know, uh, it looks like I'm connected. Um, it looks like I have a good connection. It looks like you have a good connection. I think we are ready to proceed. Excellent. I'll go ahead and mute my, let me mute my microphone. And please feel free to begin whenever you like. Thank you, and um, good morning, everyone. I hope you're all having a good Sunday, other than a few technical difficulties. Um, my presentation today, I'm titling, When It Rains, It Pours. The nice thing about having done so many Carmen's Corners is I have a decent vault of past presentations that I can quickly uh, pull up for my purposes. I am working on two new ones that I hope you'll find very exciting. Um, but unfortunately, I was waylaid this week with a cold, and uh, I was pretty much on the couch all of Friday. So I'm glad that I went back to the archives and found this presentation, which I feel um, is relevant to my current week and is also pretty informative. So originally, when I started this presentation, um, I, I named it It's Raining Cats and Dogs, uh, really because of, of the rain in Seattle. So in the summer, this city is gorgeous. This is a photo I took in June of 2012, I want to say. We recently got a fantastic new Ferris wheel along the uh, waterfront. And this is taken from the top of the waterfront in a beautiful blue, crisp, sunny day. I did have a solarizing filter on my phone when I took the photo. So I love this picture. It really <clears throat> encompasses the, the ideal of a summer in Seattle. But unfortunately, that's not the typical weather. It's usually pretty rainy here. This is a radar shot I took from the Seattle Times this morning, about 10.15. So as you can see, we're really in the rain today. And that little yellow-orange cloud right above us is uh, definitely pouring. So they are experiencing raining cats and dogs right there. But um, I'm going to get to the cats first. This presentation is about cats and dogs. Um, and to start with, just uh, talking about feline issues. So about two years ago, my cat Huxley, I have two kittens. They're Huxley and Chloe. They're not really kittens. They're about 10 and 7 years old, um, respectively. Huxley was having, as we would call, uh, inappropriate elimination issues. He was peeing in the office, on the carpet, on the baseboards, and we were just getting really tired of it, as you could imagine, um, and trying to figure out why he was being such a jerk. Um, and, of course, we were trying to punish him with a spray of cold water, but, of course, that never really deterred him. And in trying to search for a solution, we looked to Google to figure out what might be causing his, his symptoms. Thanks to Google, we found a couple of really great resources, one called Cats International. It's a nonprofit um, dedicated to helping humans live with their, their feline animal friends. And what I think I took away the most from that research and that education is that we really had to get into the mind of the cat and to be empathetic. And as it turns out, at that time, I was working a lot. I had a, a lot of responsibilities with my um, extracurricular volunteer activities. I wasn't really home a lot, and my cat was frankly getting a little pissed off because, uh, you know, it wasn't really cleaning the litter box enough and not giving him as much attention. And so once we started relating what those issues were, I think we were able to get to the root of the problem and uh, take him to the vet, obviously, to rule out any medical conditions. And really, after giving him some more attention and kind of being more consistent about cleaning up his litter box and giving him, you know, enough cuddle time, kind of cut it out. So we've definitely had a, a big improvement on the inappropriate elimination issues. So that was that. And um, now I'm going to move on to the, the dog part of the presentation. So in learning to be empathetic about my cats, I also kind of ran across at the same time this article in the New York Times of Cesar Romero. You may know him as the dog whisperer. So Caesar and I have a lot in common. We're both Mexican. Um, as a young child, he grew up in Culiacan, Mexico, and uh, he, they used to call him the, the dog boy because he felt more comfortable around animals and specifically dogs than he did around people. He was kind of shy, and he ended up relating more to, to dogs than he did to other folks in his community. When he turned 19, around the time he was 19, he immigrated to the United States 
and he got a job at a dog grooming salon. And he quickly gained a reputation for being very well, uh, working very well with um, with dogs, and to be a really effective dog trainer. And so at the time, he was not very, charging very much for his services. And uh, as luck would have it for him, he one of his early clients was Jada Pinkett, uh, also known as Will Smith's wife. So she was a young actress at that time too, and he expressed to her his desire to one day have his own television show. Uh, all about training dogs and working with people. And she was very frank with him. Um, she told him, well, frankly, your, your English is not good enough to be able to translate this into a television career. And to his credit, he took that advice to heart, and he spent several years advancing his English language skills and also working more with agents and figuring out this brave new world of entertainment, reality television. And as you know now, he, he became a very successful entrepreneur and he has got a show I think it's still on it's been a while since I checked but this photo um, coming up next here really encompasses his you know growth and transformation from being a young kid in Mexico to uh, being an international celebrity uh, this idea of handling 10,000 chariots I really latch on to that because I, I constantly feel like I'm trying to stay on on my my horse here while uh, riding all these chariots all these different tasks that Many of you may also feel uh, you have a lot going on in your life, and how do you handle it? That's another talk that I'll, I'll have separately, but I felt it was really interesting to see him being so successful in, in managing all these different aspects of his career and all of these different dogs. Now, moving on, um, the reason I chose this presentation to pull up from my archives is that this week we've had a house full of sick kitties. Um, I kind of kindly refer to Frank as my big kitty. He's somewhat feline in nature. And um, my cat Huxley has been back on uh, ill uh, symptoms for, for a while. We were gone for the Christmas season, um, and he was being looked after by my coworker. And then we were gone again for New Year's, and then I had a conference in New York, um, so I was gone again for about a week. So there was a lot of period of time um, between December and beginning of February where we were in and out of town having different people come in and check on them. And what we usually would do when we go out of town is give them um, a feeder full of dry food and a lot of water, and then my friends would come over and give them wet food. Well, he's uh, quite a glutton, and it seems that during that period, his gluttony nearly killed him because all of that dry food was really uh, essentially he was eating a lot of carbs, <laughs> which is not good for cats. He developed uh, diabetes. It took us a little while to figure that out. He was just not feeling well, and he was drinking a lot of water, which was very unusual. Cats usually don't drink a lot of water, especially not the quantities that he was drinking. So I took him to the vet, and they diagnosed him with diabetes. And we started a program of shooting him up with insulin uh, twice a day. And slowly he started devolving to the point where his legs were getting really weak, and he couldn't really even walk anymore. So that was freaky, um, very scary. Around the same time, Frank got very ill. He got a cold. He was kind of on the couch, so I had two sick cats. Uh, I had a lot of work deadlines, very opportune time for the cat to be sick because I had to take some time off of work to take him to the vet to you know, figure this out. And so um, I'm happy to report uh, that we are all on the mend. I also got a, a cold, as I mentioned previously, so I was out on Friday, Thursday and Friday. Um, and now we're all kind of feeling better. We adjusted Huxley's medication, and I think we're all uh, on the mend and, and looking forward to good health for the rest of the month. And so with that, I'm going to end my presentation with uh, what I usually consider my chicken noodle soup when I'm sick. I really like to have a lentil soup, a hearty soup. It's also really good for rainy days. So what I would suggest is you take a cup of lentils, any color you like. You can do the yellow lentils or just plain uh, normal lentils. Um, uh, celery, carrots, garlic, tomatoes. And what you do is just cook the lentils first. Um, as you recall the last presentation, I gave you a recipe for vegetable stock. I would really recommend using some of that. It gives a really good base to your soup. And uh, cook up the lentils until they're pretty good, nice and soft. Uh, in a separate saucepan, you can uh, saute the remaining ingredients and add them to the lentils, uh, saute or simmer for another 10 minutes. And you can garnish with cilantro and serve with some nice toasted bread or some croutons. Um, it's a pretty nice meal to have when you're you know, sitting inside trying to avoid getting wet. 
with that, I'm going to return it to Derek, and thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to chat with you. <clears throat> so, you know, Carmen, I think you and I should begin a new book series called uh, Lentil Soup for the Soul. <laughs> I love that. Um, and, and so just a, a quick by the way, uh, when, I was, uh, when I was little, I had a kitten, and uh, Janice had a uh, little, little puppy. Um, so I, I definitely can relate to uh, what you're talking about today. And so a uh, big question out uh, over the internet, and that is, do you have feedback or questions for Carmen? Um, well, uh, I can relate that uh, for a few minutes, and then we can switch over to, to Bill. The, uh, the good news on Bill's side is that he was able to, uh, to restart his PC, and now it looks like he has reconnected with the meeting uh, with no further issues. So, Carmen, uh, for you from uh, Julie and Gary, glad you are feeling better. Uh, happy vegan vittles. <laughs> and from Alex, great presentation. It is funny, and I was thinking about uh, Caesar Milan this morning uh, when walking my dog. Very interesting. 